So let's talk about some of the specific data products and let's start with precipitation where you are, okay? So we're doing them on a five minute interval for the accuracy, the aesthetic value is there as well. Um, but we're splitting this up. T traditionally what we've done is provided a product that's called precipitation rate. Now we are providing something that's called max reflectivity. What's behind that chain? Okay, so there are two product outputs on precipitation, as you mentioned, max reflectivity, which is a simulation of what reflectivity from the radar would look like. So you're simulating real live radar reflectivity. So it's picking up precipitation that may not only be hitting the ground, but it is also aloft, like you typically see with radar returns. They may not always be hitting the ground, but it could be aloft. So the simulated max reflectivity will look more like a radar image. The second output is precipitation rate, which is particularly precipitation that's actually the model believes is hitting the ground. So that's not the precipitation that's aloft, it's actually precipitation the model believes should be accumulating on the ground. So you have two choices, depending on the weather situation, you can use the max reflectivity or the precipitation rate product. So if I'm looking for something to simulate the radar, I'm going to choose the max reflectivity, which I would certainly use during convective thunderstorms, things like that, and it's going to aesthetically represent those very well. And you're gonna have the bonus of every five minute interval for those. Their precipitation rate is still going to be the summation of what would hit the ground in that 15 minute window. It's actually that the precipitation rate is the precipitation that would hit the ground within that five minute window. So it is still going to be on five minutes as well. Yes. Okay, so, so obviously the intervals match, the images may not match because of what you're talking about is that precipitation rate is gonna reflect what's happening at the ground level more accurately than perhaps what max reflectivity is. Yeah, what you'll see if you're looking at both images is typically the max reflectivity will have more aerial extent to the precipitation the precipitation rate will have. But if you're looking to convey what's actually hitting the ground, precipitation rate may be the right product to use. If you're trying to compare what's actually occurring on the radar with what's occurring out of the model, the max reflectivity product may be the best product to use. And with all of these products, including the max reflectivity, if you want to bring down and eliminate some of those lower, lower levels that may not be hitting the ground, that can be achieved through altering the DBZ levels on the color palettes and limiting what's being displayed. Yeah, you have full control over displaying different levels from the, uh, from the precipitation output. So that full control is yours. Based on the weather situation, what you're seeing, you may want to adjust based on the weather situation yourself. Okay, so on the, and on those two different precipitation categories we're talking about, which precip rate and max reflectivity, mm -hmm. we have categorized versions of those Correct. that include a precip mask. Correct, so we're categorizing between snow, mixed precipitation, and rainfall on both of the products. So you have that option of including that on both products. And one of the things we're doing too is we've tweaked a lot of the palettes to where you can have that synergy between those and you can even show a different color of snow if you don't want a white, you can change it to a blue. So we're making a synergy between what's done in current radar to what's going to be in future radar. So there's a similarity of there of color, but you can control a lot of that. Right, so we're providing this at the, on the release of the product, these different color palette description options, but you also have that ability if you yourself want to make your own color palette, you have that ability as well. With that precip, precip mask that's included in there, how, what can you say about the accuracy of that precip mask? Because that's always what, I, you know, where's that dividing line between freezing rain and sleet and what snow? Right, right. So, so on the forecast precipitation mask, we're utilizing a lot of the information from different levels of the atmosphere to determine where the precipitation is actually transitioning from one type to another. So we utilize a very sophisticated method to determine where that's actually going to occur by looking at information in different levels of the atmosphere. All right, so let's move from reflectivity to accumulation. And we're changing that up a bit with this new model. In the past, we provided three types of precipitation output. Snow, mixed precipitation, which included rain, snow mix, freezing rain or sleet, and then liquid or rainfall accumulation. Today we're able to provide four different discrete accumulation products. Snowfall remains the same, still a snowfall product. Then we have freezing rain and we have an ice pellet accumulation. So as opposed to that mixed precipitation, now you can have the choice between freezing rain or ice pellets. And then we still have the liquid accumulation, the rainfall accumulation. We also actually provide a fifth type, which is total accumulation, which is if you were going to make 
the snow, the freezing rain, and the ice pellets all liquid, you have a total accumulation as well. So this gives you lots of options because you can take each of these individual products and display them as one product, or you could merge something like ice pellets and freezing rain if you wanted to. Correct. So you, if you want to just show off the freezing rain band, you can make that one layer, show that frame. If you want to show where the freezing rain, the snow, and the sleet are going to be at, you can combine those in different layers. So we've implanted this accuracy with the precipitation mask to where I can show the different types of precipitation. But we're obviously also applying that to these individual layers of different types of precipitation accumulation. Absolutely, yes. So we're being consistent in taking what we've done in the past with snow ratios, it being 10 to 1 or 20 to 1. And we're doing that with the new model as well, to where we're providing a lot of opportunity to change those values because the difference in those values can be huge. As we learn when we're young, snow water ratio is 10 to 1. So one inch of rain is 10 inches of snow. That isn't always or is rarely ever the case in the real atmosphere. So being able to provide these situations where the, it's very cold and the air is very dry, you may have a high snow water ratio. Or you get these fall or springtime storms where you have a, a high water content and you have a snow water ratio that's 8 to 1. So being able to provide that flexibility to the customers to allow them to choose which ratio to use to convey to their users. When we talk about the cloud layer, what we've done is we've gone from a low, mid, and high cloud cover. Now we're merging those all together into this total cloud cover layer, and it looks really good. I think what we've achieved with that is a more accurate depiction of what the clouds are going to look like into the forecast period. So it's visually appealing, but also from an accuracy standpoint, it's better as well. We're also being consistent with what we're providing for wind. So we're providing the contours to where you can show the color coding of what the wind speeds are going to be. But we're obviously including those streamlines as well so we can show the flow of weather. So the things you're able to see with the wind depiction within the three kilometer, you're able to see weather features within the wind field that you've not been able to see before with a lower resolution model. So seeing the wind depiction of wind blowing out of a thunderstorm you're able to pick up. Being able to see land and sea breezes on a small scale, you're able to see within the wind field now at three kilometers that you were not able to see with these lower resolution models in the past. With the winds, like many of our other products, we're providing different layers of the atmosphere. So for example, in winds, you can show the surface winds, but you can also show the upper level winds to tell that part of the story. Yeah, and that's an important part to make when you're looking at a tropical weather event, when you want to see the wind flow at different levels within that hurricane or tropical storm you can depict that as well. With these temperatures, the resolution is so high quality that you were talking about winds, how you can see how the winds rush out from a thunderstorm. You can also see on the temperatures, the cooling effects from those winds rushing out. Yeah, absolutely. That's been one of the things that's been most notable with the model when you animate the model. You can see the when a cloud moves over a certain location, you can see the temperature decrease a little bit. You can see the urban heat island effect at all the major cities across the country because of the detail of temperature forecast. You can see these passages of, of, of wind changes within the temperature field as well. You can actually see the weather fields, the other weather fields within the temperature field based on how it's reacting to a cloud passing over or a rain shower or other things occurring. We're also providing a data product that is visibility from the model, and so that can show not only the effects of fog, but other weather parameters. Yes, so within the visibility calculation, we're not only using based on fog, but based on precipitation. So if it's heavy snowfall, reduced visibility, that's going to show as well. And we also bring air quality into the equation. So it's visibility that's reduced or restricted based on fog, air quality, and precipitation.